straight over to the next airline, um, which is Aerion, uh, ALTU, which is another SPAC play. Um, the, the key thing which I've found with Aerion is that they have so many um, investors which are so skilled. Obviously, they've been working with Boeing, GE, Honeywell. Uh, that Yeah, they've got a lot of big names in the aviation industry uh, backing them, really. Um, and obviously, ALTU raised 300 million from our IPO in December. Um, and since then, they've also filed for two more SPACs. I wouldn't be surprised to see Aerion sort of closing on this SPAC now um, because I can't, I can't see them really focusing on two new SPACs if they weren't pretty much there on this one. Yeah, so, so they're obviously a supersonic jet company for people who don't know. Um, and it's all about um, travel with this one. Not so much, obviously, in the space scene, but it's it's um, it's very similar. Um, and they're um, looking to get uh, from anywhere in the world within the three-hour time frame. That's their end goal. So you in England, and obviously want to travel. For, I mean, for us to Australia in three hours. Yeah. So it's a big ask. Um, but the yeah. backing from who would want to go there, though, Jordan? Not anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like like you're saying, um, so I think the um, combined total once the merge is completed is about three billion. Um, again, um, their main worry, and um, they were saying on their presentation interview, well, it's not a worry, but the manufacturing process starts in twenty three. And they want it to be in service by 20, uh, 27. So it's a definite long term play here. You know, um, they're not looking to do anything like any time in the next month or in the next, you know, this year. Um, but yeah, they're looking to make about 300 aircrafts over the next 10 year period, creating about 40 billion in revenue. So um, they're still, they're not a they are they're not a startup company, but they're at the early sort of stages with um, what they want to complete. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the key things for them was um, the fact that they're trying to be carbon neutral. So obviously, planes at the moment, um, emissions and etc. Obviously, we, we keep seeing in America at the moment all the new rules coming in about emissions, um, and obviously they're trying to produce a carbon neutral plane which travels 150 percent faster as normal yeah. planes with huge ranges as well um so that um they um i asked i'm gonna have to read a bit more into that but their, their jet fuel is created by pulling co2 out of the air okay so obviously with the current you know environment sort of change now um yeah they are looking into that and yeah to, to go into that sort of side yeah it's another one of their partners i know they're partnered with a company called carbon engineering um and they're they're basically using sustainable fuels and they're trying to produce a sustainable jet fuel yeah. um so really i mean they've already got a facility in florida which obviously is very obviously they, they've already got a facility they need a facility to store stuff i guess but if they're not taking off till 2027 or um, then really they, they've got time for that to just be sat there. Um, their first flight, apparently, they've said uh, will be 2025 is what they're, they're hoping if everything goes to plan, is, is what I read on. Um, but the, it was saying 4,200 miles per supersonic flight and 5,400 miles per subsonic flight. So these are just huge ranges, really, in comparison with um, your Boeing 787 of today. Um, and that that's why we're seeing really a lot of investment by Boeing and aircraft companies because if this works, then they'll all be left in the dust and they'll be it's essentially the new Boeing in in flight. Yeah, you know um, that's that's what it's moving to, and that's like a good indication with Boeing backing it is that they mm. probably along with major airlines know that this is the future and yeah. This is to, to get in yeah i think we kind of all knew that this kind of flight would be the future oh, yeah. i mean you, you know back from the concord days right um 
I don't know, they, they were kind of doing something along those lines. And then I think you guys know what happened. Um, <laughs> and I think it took everyone a little while to kind of settle and realize, okay, yeah, this is, we're in a, like a better technological time now. We can probably pull this off. Um, yeah. So I think now is probably long overdue for something like this. Yeah. Long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's okay. it. No, I was reading another one of their partners is Spire Global, um, who are a weather tracking company. And they're basically known as one of the most accurate weather tracking companies out there. Um, so apparently the idea is um, that will ensure the consistency and safety of all their flights. I mean, I, I'm not particular on the what the atmospheric conditions need to be for um supersonic flights um but they've got that partnership there already it certainly seems like they've got almost too many partners to fail at the moment um or at least they've spread the risk across them um they were saying one of their main issues is the supersonic boom um, and they, they didn't them. often they hitting, the, hitting the ground yeah so so that, that's the thing they're using boomless technology they call it yeah. um which apparently uses warm air um to stop uh the supersonic boom oh yeah that's a big so, one as well that that was a big complaint about the concord as well um yeah where it's the the really loud boom sounds <laughs> yeah 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 that's it i think yeah it it's it, it certainly a very attractive stock just for how many people are in it um uh, yeah it, it's certainly n sort of nice to see the collaboration of all the big names really in one project because it's always a good sign as an investor when you've got that many expertise and investment going into one project you hope that they'd be able to create something tangible yeah that's it well that's it when you when like we're looking at stock you know you look at certain things in it you know their revenue um a lot of it is the board team you know and the investors in that you know and whether mm -hmm. they've got big names how much they're investing just gives you a massive indication of that type of company and who believes in it you know with chimath like we were just speaking uh, about you know with the environmental stuff you know he's very passionate about that so anything he's investing in that he believes in um because it's not small investments a lot of it it's a, it's big investments um and like with boeing it's just you know another big name that adds to their list yeah yeah and i certainly think obviously if if successful it it could well it, it's trading quite low at the moment when you compare it to other airlines and tech stocks and stuff that i wouldn't be surprised to see if it is successful it would be more than 10 times its current trading value. Um, but again, it's, it's a big if, and it's another five-year wait, um, really. So it is another long-term play, as much of this sector is. Uh, it's certainly not a day trading play. No. No, and, it, and again, um, you know, this is this is a thing that's going to be uh, be happening in the future. It's going to be interesting to see their rivals and who um, in the airline companies now might start. We might see a, a change and you know different investors coming in from airlines um, into new products um, along with their planes. Um, that's something obviously we're going to have to view and watch out for. Um, but yeah. Um, you know, as as a as a transport sort of company, I think I think they're great.